I'd like to call the regular town council meeting of April 15th to order, please. And if you could all rise, if, if you're able, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of Allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Maniscalco, if you could do roll call, please. <laughs> All right. I'll just head my way around. Uh, Councillor Pendleton? Present. Councillor King? Here. Deputy Mayor Syracuse? Present. Mayor Del Mickey? Here. Councillor Carey? Here. Councillor Balboni? Present. Councillor Lewis? Present. And Councillor Beganski? Present. Thank you, Mr. Maniscalco. And moving on to Mayor's remarks. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, yesterday, April 14th, 2024, was the start of National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week, a week set aside to raise public awareness and honor the men and women who provide a lifeline to callers every day. South Windsor had a total call, number of calls of 8,946 for 911 and for routine calls was 42,563, and all calls are answered by a dispatcher, and there is no automated system. Today, April 15th, is the beginning of National Work Zone Awareness Week, and it runs through April 19th. National Work Zone Awareness Week is an annual spring campaign at the start of construction season that encourages safe driving through Highway work zones. Please remember that work zones are temporary and actions behind the wheel can last forever. The week of April 21st and 27th is Administrative Professionals Week with April 24th being Administrative Professionals Day. Administrative professionals are the unsung heroes and will ensure that everything operates seamlessly. So here's to you and thank you for all you do. And lastly, Sunday, May 5th, from 2, uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. will be the third annual Peace Through Pie event, and it will take place at Wapping Community Church at 1790 Ellington Road. Based on the teachings of Martin Luther King, Peace Includes Everyone, Pie, is an event with a goal of gathering people together to share a piece of pie, enjoy some entertainment and crafts, and embrace the diversity to, of our community. There is no admission fee. Everyone is welcome. And again, this event is Sunday, May 5th, from 2 to 4 p.m. And that's all I have. And uh, moving on to adoption of the agenda, Deputy Mayor of Syracuse. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to adopt, adopt the agenda as presented. Second. Any changes, additions, corrections? Discussion? Well, just... Discussion too. Not discussion. I just want to say to anyone, because I see folks that are coming in and some of the students, there's more agendas on that back table if anyone needs an agenda to take and write minutes on it or notes on it for the meeting for school, or if anyone who hasn't received an agenda, it's right on the back table. Sorry, thank you. No, thank you. Since we're under agenda, I figured. Councillor Carey? Um, I'd like to make a minor amendment. Can we, um, under number eight, adoption of minutes of previous meeting, can we take out the word action and put in regular? Regular meeting. Regular meeting minutes. Okay. Second. We have a second on that amendment. Any other amendments to the agenda? Councillor Lewis? I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the April 1st, 2020. Uh, no, we're not, we're not there yet. What's we're just on? amending, adopting the agenda. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment to the agenda? Aye. Aye. Seeing, any opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Adoption of the agenda is approved. Moving on to item six, communications and reports from the town manager, Mr. Maniscalco. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, in terms of our spring parks update, we've been conducting ongoing maintenance of all the trails. Uh, they're now officially open. Uh, during the winter, we replaced boardwalks at Major Michael Donnelly. Uh, we'll also be regrading the Sullivan Avenue entrance parking lot on April 11th, uh, which, will which will complete the much needed maintenance at that park. 
The athletics fields have all been renovated and prepped for the season. We finished prepping, uh, prepping and lining all the fields the week of April 1st for both the recreation and high school fields. Uh, we did a lot of uh, grading and overseeding in the fall, so the fields are in good shape for the spring sports season. Uh, we'll be conducting ongoing maintenance of the parks, which will include items such as mowing, landscaping, trail maintenance, playground repairs, as well as lining of the athletic fields throughout the season. In terms of our police department accreditation, the police department has been pursuing national accreditation for several years. This process started well before it was required by the Connecticut Police Accountability Act and is almost complete. The Commission on Accreditation of Law Enforcement Agencies, CALEA, is the certified body for national accreditation. After several years of being the behind the scenes efforts, we officially applied for CALEA Tier 1 accreditation in September of 2021. Once this application was submitted, it started a three-year countdown toward a deadline of September 2024 by which all standards have to be met. Sergeant Charlie Bowes is our accreditation manager and his focus, consistent and dedicated work have brought us to the final stages of receiving this award. After preparing hundreds of standards and policy and providing proofs that those standards are being upheld, we were, we were ready for the final CULIA assessments. The first of these assessments was a web-based remote assessment that took place on March 1st through March 9th of 2024. The two assessors reviewed Sergeant Bo's work for days and we sailed through the, that assessment with flying colors. During a conference call after this assessment, the assessors spoke very highly of the thorough work that had, all, that had been done. The next and final step is an on-site assessment that will take place next week. On April 15th, 16th, and 17th, we will host a Kalia assessor at South Windsor Police Department. His assessment will include several meetings, interviews, tours, and opportunities to see the CULIA policies and observable standards are being upheld. Once this final assessment is complete, the last step in this, in this three year long process will be for Sergeant Bose and Chief Lindstrom to attend the National Accreditation Conference in Charlotte, North Carolina in July, where we anticipate receiving our final award of accreditation. Also two items I don't have on my written report for all of you. Uh, first of all, the town has been made an applicant on the uh, Foster Street Solar uh, application with the Siting Council, so we are now a member, a party to that application, and uh, we're going to be working on making sure that we uh, meet or meet or exceed as many standards as possible to benefit the residents within our community. Uh, also, just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, as of just probably 30 minutes ago, I received. Uh, notice that the company out of Ohio that is managing our splash pad will actually be sending staff on site to implement those uh, pieces of the of the equipment I believe next week so hopefully we see that moving forward very very shortly so uh, we do have some contingency plans in place and we are shooting still for Memorial Day opening and that is all I have I'd be happy to answer any questions any questions Councillor Lewis Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have two comments and one question. Um, congrats to uh, the Parks and Rec team that, that did a great job maintaining the fields throughout a very rainy season. Also, a lot of congratulations to Sar Sergeant Charlie Bowes um, and the support of the team that, that helped him along the way. I was wondering if there's any chance that uh, because of the state and the mandate and accreditation and what we've accomplished, is, is there any grant money available for that training? Um, you know, I think what we're going to see probably, I, it, to date, there hasn't been, um, but I think what we're going to see is that there's going to be requirements from the state of Connecticut to be CULIA certified to be eligible for the grants that we current, currently receive or would annually receive moving forward. So I think it's going to become one of those types of things that we would need to meet this requirement to be eligible to apply moving forward. Okay, thank you. And also for the splash pad, yay. Yeah, <laughs> you're telling me. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, in regards to the uh, splash pad, I'm glad that it's on track to, to open this spring, which is great. Um, my kids were just using one down where we were staying in Florida, and um, I was wondering, you mentioned the water features before. Do we have any kind of rendering or uh, photo of what those sure. features are going to look like just to get people a little more excited about? Yeah, I know our Parks and Rec director has some renderings of what the uh, proposed splash pad is supposed to look like. I can get that uh, probably electronic and send it out to all of you. Thank you. Appreciate that. 
Councillor Pendleton. Thank you. Mr. Maniscalco, <coughs> thank you for your report. I know with the uh, Spring Park updates, um, I have a question concerning that. I know maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, the boardwalks that Eli Terry were brought up. Where do we stand with that? I'm going to call it a boardwalk, not a bridge. I think it's more a bridge. Okay. Um, yeah, I know that that has... I think it's going back and forth between Public Works and maybe the Board of Ed because it, it was a school property, whether it was fixed or not. Um, I believe it has been fixed was last I heard, but I'll check on it. To Could you just check sure and send us an email on that? Just Because I, I recall that being out there for a while and I'm not sure where we stood with that. Also, um, with the Police Department accreditation, does, with the accreditation, do towns or cities <clears throat> fall into separate criteria. We're a town of 27,000, we're not a giant city. So do we fall into different areas and in, within our category, do we know how many police departments are accredited? Um, within the state of Connecticut? Sure. So within the state of Connecticut, I believe all 169 towns, uh, unless they're overseen by a state trooper, um, must be accredited, I believe, by next year. So everybody's working their way through this process, which is I pretty see. onerous, as you can see. I see. Okay. And how long does that certificate of accreditation last, and do they have to renew every single year? I believe it's renewed every single year. Okay. And there's different, as you move through the process, there's different tiers. So, you know, we're, we're just at tier one, and then we would probably work towards tier two, and then I think there's three total, but don't hold me to that. Okay. Well, congratulations to Sergeant Charlie Bowes for getting us to where we've gotten so far and all the hard work that he's put into it. And best of luck this week with meeting with them on the today, deal. tomorrow, and the next day. So best of deal. luck. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Councillor King. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you for your report, Mr. Maniscalco. Uh, the only thing I wanted to say is good job, because I know I brought it up before, so to say it publicly in regards to and it's Citing council or sitting council? Citing. Cite, yeah, I can all confuse it. I get but, it confused. <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, so for the solar panels and all those types of things that were brought up by the town that we all talked about at the last meeting, um, I sat in on one of those meetings and it was painful. So I'm glad that you <laughs> got on that. Um, and it's April 25th? I believe it's April 25th. Okay. And we are also watching, uh, I think as I brought up to all of you, the battery storage facility. Right um, up on Barber Hill. That's the next one that we're going to be, you know, paying attention to as well. Awesome. Well done. Thank you. Seeing nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Maniscalco. Moving on to item seven, public input for items on the agenda. Public input shall not exceed 30 minutes. When recognized by the mayor, the speaker shall approach the lectern, give their name and address. Speakers shall avoid personal attacks or impugning or alleging an improper motive to any person. The speakers may address the council on any item on the agenda. The speakers shall limit their speaking time to five minutes. And before I do open it up to the floor, we have an email that a resident asked to be read in the record, so I thought we'd, uh, I'd read that first. It's uh, from Peter Andrews at 80 Cody Circle to Madam Mayor Delnicki and Town Council members. Subject is uh, 13G, Project Finn. I am writing to you tonight as a concerned lifelong resident of South Windsor. As our town continues to grow, I understand the need to offer tax abatements to incentivize business to come to South Windsor and to grow our grand list and generate as much tax re revenue as possible to offset increasing education budgets and public town needs and interests. With that said, my concern is not with the strategy to bring business into town. However, it is the extension of these tax reliefs, which many of these businesses and properties seem to enjoy for years and years long after being established in South Windsor. Will these properties enjoy tax relief in per 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 perpetuity? At, the point, at what point do we have a strategy to stop or at least decrease this cycle, which is likely costing South Windsor millions of lost dollars in revenue, quite possibly due to a lack of better oversight and creative management? One example, Carla's Pasta at 50 Talbot in South Windsor is currently enjoying 
its tax, second tax fixing schedule, which appears to be extended through 2025 for approximately 1.3 million in tax savings. And now this property is for sale, this very same property now potentially to receive a third tax abatement schedule, a tax abatement proposal which apparently was discussed in an executive session for a business not yet disclosed. I am of course speaking of Project Finn. At what point does the same property in South Windsor stop enjoying these overextensions of tax breaks? We all know our town residents are paying their fair share in taxes. Businesses should be doing the same. I certainly don't see a shortage of business applications coming before planning and zoning. I would ask the town council take it, to take a hard look at the fine print and details of some of these deals being made. I would also ask our town manager to reevaluate current process and perhaps explore new strategies. Certainly we can offer tax abatements to businesses and incentivize growth without giving so much tax dollars away. I have, a, I, have to, I have to believe there's a much better balance which can benefit both South Windsor and businesses alike. Many thanks for your time and devotion to making South Windsor a better place to live. Again, Peter Andrews at 80 Cody Circle. And is there anyone from the public who would like to come up and uh, speak on any item on the agenda? John Halizak, 39 Cody Circle. I submitted a letter at uh, 2.38 this afternoon. Did that not get through? It says 3 p.m. on the website. And I don't have it here. Did you send it to the entire town council? I did, I put it on the agenda comment form. Yeah, we didn't get it. <laughs> okay, so it looks like it just went to you again. Okay, and you did, if, you, if you don't say to read it in the record at the heading like um, Mr. Andrews did, it does not get read into the record. It just gets disseminated to everyone. It looks like it might have just gone to Kathy again. Like, right, because Mr. Same thing with Mr. Andrews. The same thing. That's why I had Kathy print it. Um, let's um, have Scott look into the email system, Mr. Maniscalco. Madam Mayor, if I might. Yes. Sir, you're here, so why don't you just say what you have to say. Well, there were four items. I'm trying to recall all of them. Um, for the record, they were uh, specifically about item 13G, uh, the uh, proposed tax abatement for uh, Project Finn. Um, there were four legal issues that I kind of researched a bit and brought forward. Um, one of the concerns is uh, that the resolution as drafted does not give any amount. It talks about the total investment. Um, it does not uh, provide any indication as to how large the abatement is. I believe it refers to seven years, but there's no amount given, okay? I understand about Project Finn wanting to remain anonymous, okay, but why leave the amount blank? Is it because it's large? Okay, I don't know. Is it 50% of $71 million? That's a lot of money, okay? Um, Doing this purely from memory, okay? <laughs> yeah, Madam Mayor, if I might again, yeah. If if either that or if we have it, I'm I'm just going to say I would assume that it's on your cell phone or something in uh, your in your sent let me, file. Let me try to flip yeah, back to it. Thank if you. It's, you're welcome. If it's in your sent file. Thank you for your forbearance. You're welcome.
Uh, it's blank. <laughs> it blanked it out. Okay. Uh, other people want to speak? Yes, no? That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to hit the key points in the interest of time. Um, what are the legal considerations if the new owners create a common nuisance? Um, this is one of the oldest tenants in law. Uh, common nuisance could be noise, it could be odors, it could be other emissions. If the uh, town council grants an abatement, do you then become party to any common nuisance lawsuits? Um, it's a liability that I'm suggesting that you look into. Uh, has anyone advised Project Finn as to who their new neighbor might be? Um, I think that's kind of an important thing. Who knows if it's happened, but uh, better to get it on the table now than in the middle of uh, some other situation, okay? Um, I touched on the amount of the abatement. And um, finally, I asked that you recall the lessons learned from the, uh, the movie studio. Okay, um, if the other party doesn't act according to the agreement, what means does the town have to redress this, right? Are you going to have any audit powers to go in and look at the construction bills or the equipment bills to see whether they fulfilled their part of the bargain? Okay, um, I think that's the gist of it. Um, at the end of it, it was a suggestion the suggestion is that you call a special executive session, you meet, you go into executive session, you could drive over to 140 Edgewood Drive. Um, that's the town-owned open space that directly abuts uh, the Carlos Pasta site. And you can decide based on what you know about Project Finn and what we don't, um, would you live um, right where that open space allotment is or not? If you wouldn't, um, I think you need to do some soul searching about whether you do that to the rest of us because it's an unknown to us, okay? Um, I think that pretty much concludes it. Um, I do wanna note the prevailing wind direction is from the Northwest. I know this because I operate a snowblower from time to time. Um, that's the way the wind blows. It's from the Carlos Pasta and other nearby industrial sites directly into hundreds of homes in the Edgewood Drive, Judy Lane, Elizabeth, um, Marilyn, even Hilton Drive, sections of Hilton Drive are, are within a thousand feet of, uh, of this facility. And uh, just please think about that, okay? And my suggestion is indicated. You can do that if you want. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Halchuk. Anyone else like to come forward at this time for any item on the agenda? Going once, twice, seeing none, moving on to item eight, Councillor Lewis. Like uh, adoption of the minutes of April 1st, 2024 town council meeting minutes, be it resolved, the town of South Windsor Town Council hereby approves the minutes of the regular town council meeting of April 1st, 2024. Second. You have two seconds. <laughs> um, any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Mr. Lewis? Approval of, approval of the April 1st, 2024 proposed Board of Education budget for year 24-25, public hearing meeting minutes. Be it resolved, the South Windsor Town Council hereby approves the minutes of the April 1st, 2024 public hearing for the proposed Board of Education budget for 
year 24-25. We have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Moving on to item nine, communications, liaisons, officers, boards, and direct, directly responsible to the council. Councilor Balboni. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I got a couple of them. Start with the uh, <coughs> public building committee. Up, oh, your microphone. Here you go. <clears throat> Starting with public building committee. Uh, there's discussion regarding the parks and rec facility. The architect toured the building, they sent a preliminary program fit out to Molly, the parks and rec director. They're awaiting a response. They're also waiting to hear if any of the fixes that are required from having the building change from an educational space to a town building have been done or, or are in the works. Moving on to Pleasant Valley, the site work and the watershed continue to be a concern. Initial sketches have been received from DPI. Uh, they were just received and need to be priced out. The commission made it really clear that we need to put urgency on this. Special meetings will be held as soon as we get the pricing to move forward. There was an outside meeting on Friday 412 with Gilbane, Colliers, DRA, and members of the PBC and the town to review everything. The roofing, there are concerns about the bubbling on the roofing in two places, seams where the two materials meet and also on the walk line. The manufacturer said it will not negate the warranty. They also stated that it takes a few seasons of heat and cool, heat and cool, and then it will flatten out. Gilbane and Silktown are looking into this. The stair panel uh, installation happened during an April break. The Board of Ed attorney and the town attorney and insurance company are working on this. The sheds up be fully functional at the end of the week. The watershed continues to be of concern. Uh, on a note of congratulations, the owner's rep, Colliers, were awarded Project of the Year for the 10-year plan <clears throat> they did in South Windsor. They were awarded a huge trophy, which they plan to bring to all of the schools to show the kids. It was well-deserved in their dedication to the town over the years. Their leadership and cooperation have been excellent. Just a quick one from the Patriotic Committee. Um, they are asking to have the uh, kids present their poster and essay contest winners to the councils on July, uh, June 3rd. See if we can get that added to the agenda. Um, also, uh, Armed Forces Day, again, is at Nevers Park on May 18th, and the Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony is on May 27th. Uh, the banners for 34 new honorees should go up just before Memorial Day at the Community Center and Town Hall Library Complex. That's it. Thank you. Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I attended the uh, April 2nd Water Pollution Control Authority meeting. Uh, they met with the, the uh, Finn project for 20 bid well for approval to connect. Um, there was a motion to approve the connection of 20 Bidwell Road. No, excuse me, that's not Finn Project. It, um, 20 Bidwell Road came to look for connection, and there was a motion to approve the connection of 20 Bidwell Row, row under um, conditions. Uh, Mr. James Murray asked what the South Windsor residents pay for the sewer rate when flow goes to other towns such as Vernon or Manchester. Mr. Fran Manfrey explained that South Windsor pays. Vernon over 500 per household, but only charges homes $460. Thought that'd be good public information. And then uh, there was an executive session to discuss uh, the Finn project about 50 Talbot Lane. Mr. Manfrey stated uh, that before making a motion to make changes to sewer service in the area map during the meeting, uh, the general public would have to be notified and a public hearing would have to occur. And Chairman Lyon reiterated that WPCA cannot approve any changes to the sewer service area, area map without a public hearing. I also attended the April 3rd meeting of Parks and Rec. Uh, the uh, Open Task Force uh, is in discussion with, about Desmond Pond as the main topic of discussion. Desmond Pond is owned by Connecticut Water Company. 
Uh, the Open Task Force discussed participating in Parks and Rec and Earth Day event on Rye Street Park on April 20th, 2024. Uh, other notes of interest is Basketball League finished on March 24th. The director, Molly Kays, wanted to thank the volunteer coaches for all their time dedicated to the league as they play such a big role. The lottery for the fourth hour will be held on the first weekend in May. Preschool session C has finished and session D will start up soon. Um, they are looking for continued support of projects in town as well as being supportive of the Parks and Recreation. Uh, of this is, they wanted to thank uh, Max Challenge for the continued support of a variety of projects in town as well as they've always been supportive of Parks and Recreation, trying to find opportunities to give back. The department received some proceeds from the Max Challenge Day of giving event that go towards health and fitness programs and offerings. Their walk and wheelways is currently busy transitioning into the fourth grade bike program that starts back on April 15th. Continue with two more sessions this spring. Walk and wheelways is also working alongside Director Case for phase one of the two cross town trails. Currently Director Case is working on getting in front of the inland wetlands and putting together uh, documents for construction phase for phase one, as well as trying to finalize design for phase two um, for grant opportunities can be looked for for the walkthrough of phase two, weather permitting will be held on April 8th. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilor Lewis. Seeing nothing further, I have an item for Wednesday, this Wednesday, April 17th, the Inland Wetlands Conservation Commission um, since the meeting hasn't taken place yet. So it's application 24-08P for a medical office building at 1300 Sullivan Avenue. It's an Inland Wetlands Conservation Commission application for the conversion of an existing house into a medical office, stormwater management system, and associated utilities on a portion of land west of 1300 Sullivan Avenue, formerly 8 Collins Lane, rural residential. Zone. So that is this Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the Madden Room. And seeing nothing further, moving on to item 10, reports from committees. Seeing none, moving on to item 11, Councillor Balboni. A motion to approve 11A1 through 11A5 as a first reading on the consent agenda. Second. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Councillor Balboni. Make sure I got the right one this time. Um, so number five here, I just wanted to make it quite clear that um, I believe we've asked a bunch of people, and I just want to make sure it's clear and on record, that we're putting Merrick Kozakowski as a member of the Housing Authority um, in a Republican seat, <coughs> and that, that stays a Republican seat either way, correct? Thank you. What's your question, Councilor Pendleton? <laughs> Is that not also happening with number four, too, because it's... Um... No, that's part of the housing fair rent that um, was created back in 22, and there's three separate... There's a bunch of R seats, D seats, and other gotcha. parties. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. Sorry. That's okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to 11B. Councilor Pendleton. Motion to approve 11B1 as a second reading on the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those, uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Moving on to item 12, unfinished business. Having none, moving on to 13, new business, buzz, budget presentations. And we have human resources. Ms. Perry? Yep. Uh, so that's page 52 is where it starts on. Uh, page 53, you've got your, your numbers. So it's a 383,000 
$530 okay, budget. Me, hold on, Mr. Met Ms. Galico. Yep. To make a point of order, is, is there any way that we can move someone up in the agenda now because we have guests in our audience and so they don't have to sit through our whole budget process and our budget numbers, but to move an agenda up on the item, um, move an agenda number item up on the agenda. I would support so that. So you want to suspend the council rules and move agenda item 13G up to right Where now? Where we're presently at, and then we can move into our department presentations because we have guests. Thank you for pointing that out. So second. we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Sorry, Mr. Mansk, no. You're fine. <laughs> I know. Um, moving on to item 13G, Councillor Buganski. Give me. <clears throat> Resolution approving an offer of a tax abatement agreement with Project Finn. Whereas a request for tax abatement has been received from Project Finn, an out-of-state company for development of real property located at 50 Talbot Lane, South Windsor, Connecticut, the property, and whereas the Town of South Windsor's Tax Partnership Program established pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes Section 12-65B is intended to encourage the development and expansion of quality business in town through tax and other economic incentives and is designed to retain and attract business that will generate substantial additional tax revenues and employment opportunities for the town while providing quality goods and services and Whereas the Economic Development Commission meeting held on March 27th, 2024, the Commission reviewed and recommends that a seven-year tax abatement agreement, the agreement, be offered for the development of the property upon the application of Project Finn, and whereas Project Finn will be the property owner subject to the agreement, and whereas the town manager recommends, pursuant to said program, that the agreement be offered to Project Finn as an incentive to invest an esti estimated 71 million in total cost for significant upgrades to the existing building, equipment, and a planned expansion of approximately 28,000 square feet. The company will create 210 jobs to operate the facility. Now, therefore, be it resolved that South Windsor Town Council is pleased to offer the agreement for seven years between the town and Project Finn, commencing with the grand list following the date the certificate of occupancy of the property provided, however, that if such assessment is changed by any future town revaluation, the new assessed value of the property shall be reduced by the percentage applicable to the year within the agreement period such assessment is charged. And be it further resolved that the South Windsor Town Council's offer to Project Finn, this agreement is conditioned upon Project Finn 1, meeting the estimated $71 million construction cost figure and agreeing to the abatement figures, and two, continuing to pay the real estate taxes on the property for a minimum of seven years from the date their certificate of occupancy is issued. Three, if Project Finn fails to meet either of these conditions, Project Finn shall refund the Town of South Windsor all of the tax benefit reductions it has received. And <clears throat> be it further resolved that the South Windsor Town Council's offer is contingent upon the execution of a written tax abatement agreement by Project Finn reflecting the terms set forth in the resolution and such other terms as the town may require. <laughs> we have a motion as second. Any discussion? Councillor Boganski. Hold on. <laughs> Catch my breath. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like to take a couple minutes to provide some clarity for the public regarding this resolution as there's been a fair amount of noise out there and understandably so. The hit piece by the local paper, which lacked any clarity, context, or details, didn't help either. Understand that the primary role of the Economic Development Commission is to help entice businesses to come to our town over another location, thereby growing the grand list. Expenses will continue to go up every year just based on simple inflationary pressures, and if the grand list does not, at a minimum, keep pace with expenses, the net result is a tax increase. Simple math. Many times, initial discussions regarding sensitive financial decisions need to be held in a small group outside of the public realm until a general consensus is met. There could be a million different reasons why that is, but typically the business asking for a concession is not interested in sharing their financial position with the public unless and until a commitment is made. In this case, I believe the business in question also wants to maintain a certain level of anonymity in order to protect their market position should a deal not be reached. As this will be an expansion location for their, this business, keeping it quiet is also beneficial to us by not giving their current community a chance to undercut our offer. <clears throat> this is an existing industrial facility, the current occupant of which is slated to end operations 
imminently. The company looking to purchase the space has plans to offer jobs to all the current employees and bring additional jobs on. These are well-paying jobs that are good for our community, especially since some of the folks, affected folks likely live here. The abatement in question is only for a previously approved expansion to the facility and only to the value of that expansion and not the entire facility. And to the gentleman's uh, comments earlier, the f based on the assessment of 3.1 million and current mill rate, that would be approximately $70,000 a year credit the first three years and decreasing as it went forward from there. <clears throat> Positives to this transaction, it's an existing location, so no use of green space. It's industrial, so no impact on the schools. Maintains the flow of taxes to the town on the existing buildings. There is an abatement on the current building, which was put forth seven years ago. That will expire in the October 2025 grand list, at which time full taxes will be being paid on that portion of the building. We will be getting additional taxes on the expansion, although at a lower rate. It's a family-owned company. They take great pride in uh, providing a positive impact in the community. Renovations and improvements to the existing building will likely increase its assessed value and therefore its tax liability. There is no real difference in truck traffic and it should be primarily limited to normal business hours. And Council Pendleton also asked that they put a big sign that says left turn only, so it won't be going through residential areas. Keeps what is a relatively specialized facility operating rather than getting mothballed. At the end of the day, I truly believe we are getting far more in return for the town than the relatively small amount of tax dollars we are waiving for the next seven years. What we don't need is another mess tech type of facility. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Begins. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, if the represent representative from that company could could come up here. One thing uh, I can share in common with uh, some of the residents in town, um, I wasn't necessarily thrilled that this needed to be kept, I don't know, I don't want to say secret, um, but the name of the company and whatnot, the explanation makes a little more sense. Um, but now that we know who they are and what they're about, um, I would love kind of just the elevator pitch that we were given on the community focus that you have um, where you're currently located um, and what you plan on doing here in town. And then again, uh, with Councillor Pendleton um, suggesting that you encourage, I'm in the transportation industry and I know for a fact you can tell your trucking companies, listen, you take a right, you know, one time we're, we're gonna get a new, we have trucking companies in town so we can hook you up with them. Um, so can you just share a little bit about what you do in your current community um, and what you plan to do here in South Windsor. You can pull that microphone closer. Yeah. Just drag it straight to you. There you go. Is this on? Okay, great. Uh, Mayor Delnicki and council members, thanks again for, for meeting with us today. We're excited to be here. My name is Rachel Gradner. I'm with CBRE. I've been working with the Home Market Foods company. Megan is here from Home Market Foods. Um, about the project is Previously stated, the company has been evaluating where to put their next manufacturing facility in the U.S. Um, we are here uh, considering the, the facility at 50 Talbot. As mentioned, um, the investment of $70 million in the creation of 220 jobs by the end of 2027. Um, certainly appreciate your support here today in making that investment happen and um, looking to partner with a town like yours. And I'll let I'll let Megan talk about who Home Market Foods is. I know that's been um, a question and we're here to address that. Yes, and I will try to keep my elevator pitch, the elevator of a normal height building and not a skyscraper as like I 10 floors tend to do. Yeah. Yes, um, so I'm the talent acquisition director with Home Market Foods. Uh, I just began in November and I'm very, very passionate about being here, hence why it's hard for me to contain in such a small segment what we're doing well for our people. Um, but brief context of who we are, Home Market Foods, we produce the nation's number one selling frozen meatball product that you can find in pretty much all of your grocery stores. We also produce a lot of the hot dogs, roller bites, um, food that you find in your local movie theaters, 7-Eleven, um, Cumberland Farms, lots of customers. So you see us everywhere even if you haven't heard of us. Um, but what makes me proud to work here really is about how we treat our people. We are a family-run business. The business is 60 years old, has been run by the same brothers for over 30 years. 
uh, and they truly treat everyone like they are part of the family. We have employee relief funds where we support employees going through hardships. We provide scholarships to employees, students. Um, we do all of that down to monthly birthday celebrations and weekly happy hours to really create community and family within the company. Um, outside of our walls, we partner very closely with the Greater Boston Food Bank, and we do funds and donations every year. Uh, we do employee matching on donations and employee contributions. We partner with local churches to sponsor families and children at Christmas and make sure that they have toys under the tree come Christmas morning. Um, so we're very proud to be really taking care of the people within our four walls and without our four walls, and we would make the commitment that to any future location, we would extend that ex those exact same values. Um, so yeah. That, that's perfect. I don't want to say anything that I'm not supposed to in regards to your business, but you did share something about like when folks go through hardships in your company, yes. if that's something you could share as well. Yeah. Because just to preface it, if I may, um, I've been on record multiple times stating that, you know, these developers that want to come here, uh, after the one that we passed, you know, you're not going to get an abatement. The benefit and be, being in this town is your benefit, right? And you guys seem to believe that. Um, just to make it clear to the public, I know it was said before, you know, the abatement is simply on the addition that they're putting on the building. They're fully prepared to come into this town, take on an already built building. They understand that's a benefit rather than going elsewhere, having to break soil and build a building. They're, they want to get up and running right away. So can, can you share, because I know you're planning on hopefully retaining as many as the folks that you can yes. that are currently working in that building, but then you have upwards of like 200 more jobs that are coming in. So kind of sh share that story you told us because that, that's huge. These are the people that we want in our town, guys. Yeah. The, these are the people that deserve you know, <clears throat> to be in South Windsor and you know, I'm thankful that you guys aren't really tugging at us for more. You're, you're happy South Windsor's enough to you. Yeah. yeah, so briefly the example we discussed earlier was um, when we have employees going through hardships, I high level alluded to the fact that we support them. One of the things we directly do is we actually will offer loans at 0% interest repayment um, to help employees who are struggling through financial hardship. So no interest, just pay us back. And it's just part of how we take care of our home market foods family. That's great. And, and since you do work with the Boston Food Bank, you can work, you'll work with the local South Windsor oh, Food Bank is here as well. Yes. And we have, have community events at the community center and throughout town. So I'm sure you would like be willing to participate or even like sponsor an event and things like that. Yeah, we would love to be invested in part of this community, not just here, but really part of it. Okay, great. Yeah. Councilor Pendleton. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. And um, considering South Windsor as your next location, for your manufacturing plant and taking an existing building and seeing the true diamond in the rough that it could possibly be with a little bit of help. And um, I look forward to working with your company if you so choose South Windsor. I think it would be really exciting. Um, and if I may, Mr. Maniscalco, um, now that Whole Market Foods is out there, the name of it, could we please change within the resolution instead of the Finn Project, Whole Market Foods, please, to make it an official resolution with the company? Sure, so the council would just need to pass an, uh, an amendment to the resolution that's there, so. So I make a friendly amendment to change it's within the home, resolution? Home market foods. Oh, home market foods. Why am I saying home? Home market, sorry. Home market <laughs> foods. Second. In the resolution, please. We have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor of the friendly amendment? Aye. Aye. All in favor, thank you, passes. Thank you. I'd also like to, if we could, on the resolution, I noticed um, just some tidying up here, the resolution, just to make sure everything is done right. Um, on the one, two, three, four, five, on the fifth, whereas, it says 71 million in the total cost for significant upgrades. That's correct? The 71 includes building upgrades, building improvements to the existing facility, the 28,000 square foot expansion, as well as machinery, equipment, furniture, fixtures. Wow, okay. Down at the bottom where it says, be it further resolved, um, could we, meeting estimate 71 million construction cost figure, 
Um, could we also somewhere put in the 28,000 square foot in that sentence? Or sh we're referring to it in the upper paragraph, I, but not. Yeah, so I, I would say that you don't need to do that because this abatement's only being offered for that expansion. Right. So if they don't, if they don't get a certificate of occupancy for an expansion, then they don't get any any abatement, anyways. But their expansion could be twenty thousand, is what I'm stating, instead of the twenty eight thousand. They could choose Got to it. do that instead. We're in twenty eight thousand is up above. I don't know if we need to include that in the bottom. I don't really. Do we? Think, no. I don't really think you need to. Okay. I mean, we still need to put. You know, this basically all this does is authorizes me to get an agreement together with them. Yes. And in that okay. agreement, it'll it'll spell out that they have to build the twenty eight thousand uh, twenty eight thousand square foot uh, expansion, and then get a certificate of occupancy for that expansion. So. Okay. And I've already made it clear, and thank you for hearing my pleas with the tractor trailers and the trucks that would leave the facility to put it on all the loading docks or wherever you have within your facility that all trucks are to turn left at the end of Talbot to go to Route 5 down Governor's Highway and not towards the residential area. And I appreciate you for listening to that um, and, and hopefully meeting that request. I also had a conversation with you about um, donating to our local food bank, which would be a wonderful thing to help out. And we also offer fuel, fuel and food bank. Fuel, fuel and food bank, and, and that would be awesome too. And I also had a conversation with you about having a, um, a veterans uh, recruiter day, recruitment day, having veterans come in and apply for positions. I think that's an awesome thing to consider um, and to look at and would be a great thing to do. Um, but most importantly is to take an existing building that is going to be vacant and making it worthwhile for both you and us in all of our community and give some jobs within our community. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Councilor King. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I appreciate you ladies being here today. Uh, my only question is just in regards to, as we all probably feel, is South Windsor first, period. Um, in regards to one, two, three, four, five, to dovetail off of uh, Councilor Pendleton, where it says the company will create 210 jobs, operate the facility, um, don't want to necessarily hold you to that, but if you wouldn't mind, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oof. Um, can you speak to the fact of making sure or ensuring, endeavoring to make sure that South Windsor employees that we currently have there are also part of the, the future of this particular project? If you yeah. can speak to that, that would be awesome. Absolutely, so as we all know, Tribe 9 operates the facility today um, mentioned that it will be closing its doors in the imminent future. Um, the, the goal of the company would be to retain as many employees as one would like to and two, the company um, would like to extend an, an offer to for job skills and even, even so much as exploring opportunities for those jobs to occur or to transition earlier. Um, as you know, this requires a significant amount of investment in the facility and into an expansion of the facility. So there is a construction timeline. Um, the company will be working with the existing employment base to evaluate what are the opportunities for them to start, you know, once they make a decision. So there's a lot of different avenues that are being explored right now to preserve that talent pool. I think that's a huge benefit that there are employees there today that have skill sets that can be transferred, that are transferable to a company like Home Foods. Uh, home market foods, excuse me. So that is that is seen as a hugely beneficial opportunity because there is a very tight labor market all across the country. Um, so I guess to answer your question directly is is yes, that is part of the goal, and that's um, seen as a, a huge positive. Thank you, thank you, Madam. And thank you. And I um, and the salary range. Did you is that public on how what you the potential of a salary would be in these positions? Yes, yeah, so it'll vary by by role. Um, overall, we're looking at upwards of 70000 plus for base wage and overtime. Um, again, that's an, an average. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, to, to add to what Councillor King was saying, I, I know you guys mentioned before that you had already spent some time at Tribe 9 um, to observe the folks and meet with them, and you mentioned that you believe that almost all of them are, are totally qualified to, to take on a position. So that's 
that's amazing. I've never really heard of that before. Um, I don't know if it's just you're in a unique position right now that you're able to do that. So I did like that. I did want to um, ask uh, Mr. Maniscalco. Um, Mr. Holzak mentioned during uh, public input uh, that there was no mention on the terms of the abatement in the resolution. Is that um, is that a requirement to have it in there? How how is how are those numbers that we've seen tied into this resolution without sure. there being? Sure. So the, the abatement that we're offering is uh, seventy percent for the first three years, and then it steps down, as Mr. Begancy uh, mentioned, uh, to sixty. 50, 40, and 30. Um, so that, that's the basic terms of what the agreement is. There's also the other standard clawback provisions that we would have in there in the event that they don't meet the employment requirements or uh, in the event that they happen to decide to move out of uh, the community within a certain period of time where they were delinquent in their taxes, that sort of thing. Um, I know some of the other concerns that were mentioned around um, more or less nuisance concerns, uh, smells, noise, things of those na of that nature. Those are handled through planning and zoning, and our blight enforcements, and uh, you know we have a noise ordinance and other things like that. So those are all handled through that avenue, um, and that would be outside of the agreement that we're entering into today. So where it says the agreement, we're we're covered there. Correct. Based on what so we've the, seen. yeah. So this and now it's been made public. Yeah, so this kind of starts the process of us putting that agreement together. We do have a standard format that we've used with the, a number of our other uh, businesses that uh, I was able to put together with the town attorney when I came on back in 2019 that we've been using moving forward, so. Okay, thank you. Yep. Seeing no further discussion, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Thank you. Congratulations. Your time. Moving back to 13A. Mr. Maniscalco. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, page 53, under Human Resources, uh, the Human Resources budget is $383,530. That's an $81,420 increase. And Vanessa, if you want to take it away and tell them a little bit about what you're I'm waiting for him to get there. Good evening, Madam Mayor and fellow council members. Thank you. I'm Vanessa Perry, the director of HR. So my initial increase was about $3,000, and it is now a little bit more than that. <laughs> because we have moved the payroll coordinator position from the finance department into the HR department. And other than that, um, the initial $3,000 increase was really just for salaries and a few other line items were decreased. Does anybody have any questions? Did I, Pendleton? Sorry, did I miss something? I missed something. About I a, a couple it. weeks ago, our payroll coordinator that was up in finance, we moved her down to the town manager's office to be in the HR department. Why is that when payroll coordinator would be under finance, no? Usually it's under HR, and her and I work closely on a regular basis. I see. So. Okay. Thank you. Seeing no questions. Thank you. Oh. Okay. I'd like to suspend the regular meeting at this moment. We have a public hearing at 
eight o'clock, so we're going to uh, recess the regular meeting and the clerk of the council, if you could please read the notice for the public hearing. To be published in the Journal Inquirer, April 2nd, 2024, legal ad, Tana South Windsor. Notice is hereby given that the South Windsor Town Council has set Monday, April 15th, 2024, at 8 p.m. in the council chambers of the South Windsor Town Hall, 1540 Sullivan Ave, South Windsor, Connecticut, as a time and place for a public hearing to receive citizen input on the proposed general government budget for fiscal year 2024-2025, dated at South Windsor, Connecticut, the second day of April 2024, attested to by Catherine Center, the executive assistant. And thank you. The town council will now accept comments concerning the proposed general government budget for 2024 through 2025. Please approach the podium and provide your name and address. If anyone has signed up to speak, and if you have not signed up, if you'd like to come forward. If you haven't signed in already, if you can sign in on the form, that would be appreciated. My name is Alan Gold. I live at 12 Riverview Drive. Um, I am here not only representing myself, but I am the president of the board uh, of Podunk Ridge Condominium Association. I am the president of the board of Pleasant Valley Condominium Association. And I am the head of the South Windsor Community Associations Coalition, um, which is all, or we're trying to get all of the common interest communities, uh, whether they're condos, HOAs, PUDs, uh, together. Last year, according to the town, our budget was increased by 8.84%. One of the things that the town saved money on was to kill the reimbursement of the street plowing for common interest communities, as well as the reimbursement for street lights. As I said, there are 37 of these common interest communities and the town saved just under $48,000. The common interest communities pay the same taxes as everybody else in town. And the only thing that we get from the town is trash pickup. When I said that the town took away reimbursements for um, plowing and electric lights, at Podunk Ridge, our budget for plowing the streets is a little over $12,000 and our reimbursement last year was $480. That's not to me a reimbursement. 
On top of that, we have some of our members are adult communities, 55 and over, 62 and over. The town of South Windsor, back in the early 2000s, invited all of these people in because they thought it was going to be great. We don't put any pressure on the school budget, and we can't because our declaration and our bylaws state that. Yet we pay exactly the same thing for the schools as everybody else. The town budget went up 8.84% last year. The federal government said that the cost of living increase was only 3.2%. Now you're proposing a budget that's going to go up 7.29%. That's a little over 16% in two years. For those of us living in adult communities, we basically live on Social Security, and if we're lucky, we have a little bit of extra income that we've been able to save for all the years that we worked. But when you go up 16%, and we get an increase of 3 or 4%, and that's high if we actually get that, how do we pay for our medical bills, our medicines, and everything else that goes along. We don't have the ability to work extra hours, to make any extra money. Many of our members can't afford this, can't afford their medicines, so they kind of cheat. Maybe they take it every other day, and that is not good. I know that town council has no impact on the school budget. You have to pretty much accept what they give you. And for the first few years of our superintendent, um, the school budget was really held down, but the increases that are going through now are crazy. According to the budget, and, and this I don't quite understand, um, it says the Board of Education budget for the fiscal year 2024 through 2025 is $51.29 million, which is a 6.4% increase over the current year's budget. And yet, on the same town um, site, for 2023-2024, it says the Board of Education budget is $88,221,342. Something does not compute. I think that I have, had made a proposal to our um, state rep and our state senator to do something for seniors, and there are a lot of seniors in South Windsor, and we're not asking for money back. My proposal was that we tie the increase that a senior could get, the percentage that the town could increase their taxes by the COLA, the cost of living adjustment that the federal government gives us. That way the seniors are still contributing. Um, we're not asking for anything back. We're not asking anybody to pay our way. But we are asking for somebody to do something to help us so that we can stay in South Windsor. There was one other thought that I had, and it just escaped me. Um, I can only ask this board, I know that there are certain things that you have no control over, but um, somebody has to stop this train ride. It is out of control. 
And um, South Windsor is not, I moved here 20 years ago, and it's just not the same South Windsor that it was then. Uh, and pretty soon, I, I figured I would stay here for the rest of my life. And I'm getting to the point where I can't afford it. And I think that I happen to be in a better position than uh, a lot of people who live here now, a lot of seniors who live here now, um, just don't have the, the same benefits, the same uh, financial benefits that my wife and I enjoy, but um, this is really getting out of hand. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that'd like to come forward at this time? And if you haven't signed in already, if you can sign your name there. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, my name is Bruce, Bruce Bardo, and I live at 24 Lavender Lane, and I'm the president of the Homeowners Association um, for, uh, Tiberi Estates Homeowners Association. And the reason why I'm here is I wanted to go back to the letter that we gave to the town council in June of last year, I'd like to pass them out to the council members. And it was in response to the letter that we got from the town council about taking away the reimbursement for the street lights and the plowing. So I'm going to read the letter. Um, my name is Bruce Bardo, president of T-Berry. Um, other members of our board are John Matkowski. John Hudek and Andy Klein, who's here today. We received the above reference letter that was addressed to our bookkeeper. The letter was formal notification that condominium reimbursements for snow, street lights, and fire hydrants from the town of South Windsor will, be, will end effectively. Our development's over 55 community of 25 standalone homes. Last year, we received a reimbursement of approximately $1,200 from the south, town of South Windsor. This amount represented a small fraction of the amount that our association paid for snow removal, street lights, and maintenance and water for the fire hydrants. Our 25 homeowners pay significant property tax to the town of South Windsor, and our association pays significant property taxes on the clubhouse and the common areas. That $1,200 is peanuts compared to what we actually pay our contractors for the snow removal and what we pay for the electricity bills for the streetlights. Our board of directors were shocked to receive this letter to end the condominium reimbursements. In addition, being an over 55 development 25 houses do not send any children into the South Windsor school system. Also, um, $1,200 represents probably about a five or six dollar increase that we had to add to our HOA fees in order to pay those bills. And again, increasing the HOA fees is a burden on the over 55 um, owners that we have in our community. So our board is asking for the town of South Windsor to reconsider this decision to end the condominium reimbursements. And that's why I'm here today, is to ask the, the town council to um, include at least reimbursements up to what we um, gave up last year um, into the budget. 
For my development, it was $1,200. I think for all the developments like this in town, it was approximately $50,000, which is peanuts compared to the amount that's in our town budget. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pardo. Is there anyone else who'd like to come forward at this time? Going once. Twice. All right, seeing none. At this time, I'd like to close the public hearing and we will now do a straw poll. All those in favor of the proposed general government budget, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay. Okay, it's a non-scientific poll, but thank you. And uh, this closes the public hearing, and we will now resume the regular meeting. Mr. Maniscalco. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We're going to move through the finance department. Uh, Starting on page 70, um, so the first part would be the assessor's uh, department, which is a $351,181 uh, budget, which is a decrease of $2,079. I'll just run through all, all three of them real quick, and then, Patty, you can take it away. Uh, under the collector revenues department, that's a $247,000. Overall, the finance department, uh, is a $371,704 budget, which is a decrease of $71,136. Good evening, everybody. I'm Patty Perry. I'm the Director of Finance, and I'm here to answer any questions on the Finance Division. Councillor Pendleton. Uh, just jumping to the end with the... Um, the negative 71,136 for the finance department, that's because of the position move from finance down to HR? Correct. Just trying to keep up. Okay, thanks. Not seeing any other questions. No. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Maniscalco. Sure, so under the town attorney's budget, which is on page 87, uh, that total budget is $240,000. It's a decrease of $10,000 this year uh, due to the uh, settling of a number of pretty uh, costly lawsuits that were out there. So uh, we thought we could bring that budget down a little bit. Could you repeat that, the number of costly what? Lawsuits. Uh, next one would be the town council. Wait, budget. I have a question. Yeah, oh, it is. It's both. It's so, all the attorneys that sound nice. So this is all the attorneys that the town has that work for it. Uh, the planning and zoning department doesn't hire a separate attorney just for them. It's typically the town attorney that will represent them. Okay. Um, it also includes labor attorneys and any other special attorneys that have, we might need. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, for good moving forward, the town council budget's on page six. Uh, that's a $203,843 budget, which is a $10,291 increase. And that's before the budget working group worked together, correct? Sure, yeah. So um, because we've had some personnel changes with the council clerk's position and we've uh, combined that, there should be a decrease, I want to say, of about $30,000 in that budget line. I, I know we had the exact 33405 There you go. <laughs> I was close. And I think there are some other smaller items the working group had identified out of the council budget to remove, but. Councilor Pendleton. Could we get an updated number with all that that you're mentioning right now from Ms. Perry, just a sheet that, an updated sheet that maybe we can put in here with the changes 
on the de deductions, the reductions? Well, those haven't been made yet. So this is the budget we're reviewing is the manager's budget. We we were just talking about the from the budget working group. They have some proposals that they handed out at the last discussion. Okay. So if those were accepted, then we would modify that in the council's book. Again, I apologize. I left sense. the That's last meeting the... early when oh, sorry. The, I, <laughs> I wasn't yeah. here, so I, I apologize. Um, I, so I don't know what happened with that vote, if that came through or not. There was the... no vote on it. They were just handed out as like, these are some of the things that the budget working group's looking at. And Okay. You should yeah. have this form. <laughs> right, but I meant for the position of Ms. Senneth and the clerk of the council. Is that not what were we talking about? Oh, I thought you were referring to the budget. So the position for Ms. Senneth, that was passed at that. Yeah, because we're under town council right now. Right. Yep. And that's where you're saying that there was a $30,000. Right. That was that's the That's what I'm referring yes. to. Yeah, so, so that reduction hasn't actually occurred because we're reviewing the manager's level of the budget. It was historically. Okay. So once... Um, the council moves forward with creating their budget and making your modifications to the budget. That's one of the modifications you'll make, and that page will be changed. At that well, that's time. what I'm saying. Didn't the vote take place to modify the, that budget? No, not yet. Oh. Just the position. But that position had numeric numbers with it, did it not? It did. So that's what I'm saying. It's already modified by that vote that evening. Yeah, but you already have an allocated expenditure in this year's <laughs> budget that you're operating. Right. Oh, okay. So going forward, we're talking about the future. For okay. The future is right for the future for the budget happening July one. Yep. So if we could, because a vote did happen for presently, but then with the going forward July one, it's not been accepted or correct. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. Seeing nothing further. All right, uh, my department, town manager's department, I have a $282,256 uh, budget for my department. That's a $370 increase. Uh, basically, uh, there was a $5,000 reduction in the professional account due to removing the ICMA in-person conference, and instead, instead I'll be attending that conference. And I don't know how you want to handle um, boards and commissions. We can move through all of them starting on page 10 through 41. Do you want to do each of them individually? Do you want to? Anybody have a preference? Preference. You want to just bundle them? Can you bundle them together, or do we have to do them individually? It might be kind of hard. Um, for the most part, we brought them. I can give you just a brief overview, and then I'll run through the numbers for them all. Uh, can we over... look at, is it page 5 with help? It starts on page 11. Um, so overall, basically, the idea with... Uh, Ms. Perry and myself had was to try to bring them in line with their actual expenditures uh, year over year rather than just kind of keeping their budgets flat. So uh, that ended up with some decreases. So Human Relations Commission, they have a $2,000 budget, which is a $500 reduction. Uh, the Historic District is a $350 budget, which is a $650 reduction. We have the South Windsor Patriotic Commission, which is a $17,775 budget, which is a zero. Uh, Public Building Commission, uh, $1,550 budget, which is a $500 deduction, or reduction, sorry. Uh, redevelopment Agency, uh, we brought that down to a zero, which is a $1,000 reduction. Uh, Agriculture Land Preservation is a $300 budget. We did not modify that one. Open Space Task Force was a $500 budget. We did not modify that one. 
Uh, Park and Recreation Commission, a $3,900 budget. We reduced that by $1,000. Uh, Juvenile Fire Center Intervention Prevention Commission, expen uh, Prevention Commission. Uh, that's a $500 budget. We reduced that by $500. And Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, it's a $10,700 budget, and we did not reduce that. Zoning Board of Appeals, $2,900 budget. That was reduced by $600. Economic Development Commission is a $1,750 budget. We reduced that by $1,550. Board of Assessment um, Board of Assessments uh, is a $1,134 budget. We did not reduce that. And Social Justice Racial Equity that is a $1,000 budget. That was an ad. Uh, it was an ad this year. We added a thousand dollars for them because they did not they did not have any funding last year. And I, I think that's it. Yep, I think you hit them all. All right. Um, excuse me. I'm going to recuse myself. Oh, I'm oh, going to go recuse ahead. myself. The fire department budget is $1,183,315. It's an increase of $15,343. Good evening, Kevin Cooney, proud to serve as your fire chief. Before I start, I just want to thank Kathy, the town manager, and self for rescheduling us for tonight. Very much appreciate that. So, um, we did our very best to um, comply with the council budget statement. Uh, we're at the lowest increase we've ever had over the, the history that I can recall at a 1.3% increase um, to try and comply with the close to zero that we could um, without jeopardizing services or our member benefits, which our members are the most critical feature that we have. Um, we got down to the 1.3 and I didn't feel we could go any lower without jeopardizing those services or our members benefits. So, any questions? Just like to uh, publicly also thank behind me is Assistant Chief Brian Peck. He is extremely instrumental in many things, but especially with the budget. So uh, thank you, Brian, for your help. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Cooney. I guess we're moving on. Uh, discussion and de deliberation regarding fiscal year 2024-2025, that's 13B, and, yep, and it's to discuss our worksheet from the budget working group. We lost another one over here. <laughs> All right, moving on to the working group, uh, the recommended cuts and ads for fiscal year 2024-2025. And as we discussed, the council clerk reductions um, from the town council budget was 500. Council clerk was 33,405. Um, which came in with, with 
the salary reduced by 42,288, adding a part-time salary position of 17,680 for 20 hours per week, reduced the pension for the um, full-time council clerk by $6,914, and reduced the Social Security Medicare tax by 1,883, which brings us to the council clerk reductions of the 33,405. And any questions? Um, seeing none. Uh, council uh, budget indexing line item, whatever, which one that was, <laughs> reduced by 1,000, and human relations was 1,500. 1,800 for cost dues being double budgeted, and cut town manager travel line item, $1,000, cut ICSC conference and travel and EDC by 1,500, and cut OPEB to bring it in line with current valuation of 87,800. And remind me what OPEB is, Mr. Munoz-Galco? <laughs> OPEB, it's other post-employment benefits. Oh, okay. which gave a total reduction of 128,505. Any questions from the counselors who were not in the budget working group? You have this, right, Mr. Okay. <laughs> That's the... Those are, those are other post other post-employee benefits, so it's things like paying health insurance after retirement, things of that nature. So um, we have some obligations for historic employees where we um, used to offer paying for health insurance after working for a period of time. We have a continued obligation to pay for that. We don't, um, we don't pay for that now for current employees. Did you have any questions, Councillor Pendleton, on, we're on this part of the discussion? No? Okay. Moving on to item 13C, Councillor King. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Resolution authorizing town manager Michael Maniscalco to sell, donate, or otherwise dispose of quote unquote surplus equipment. Be it resolved that the South Windsor Town Council hereby declares the vehicle slash equipment to be quote unquote surplus equipment as shown in Exhibit A and authorizes Town Manager Michael Maniscalco to sell, donate, or otherwise dispose of these vehicles slash equipment. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. B uh, Councilor Baganski. Quick question, actually, Chief Coney. Um, can, can we donate this to the fire department for training? It's, a, it's an old Ford Expedition that we're going to... Oh, is it? Oh, all right. Well, you, you can use it for training then. <laughs> all right. <laughs> seeing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Moving on to 13D, Councilor Lewis. Resolution approving refund batch 42 for nine tax refunds totaling $3,318.51. Be it resolved that the Town of South Windsor Town Council hereby approves nine refunds, the total of said refunds being $3,318.51 and is more fully described in Exhibit B. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? May I? Uh, Councilor Pendleton. Thank you. I just have a question concerning this. When this is printed, um, the names are not appearing on the printed document, um, just the, the bill and the location and the reason. If you could, when you see it, because it's not printing fully for us, could you just check to make sure none of us council members are on it? If we are, we can't vote on this. Please notify us. Or a relative as well. I'm sorry? A relative as well. well I don't think a relative matters. Does a relative matter? Well, a spouse. Oh, spouse. Because I, I was on there once. That's not my relative. Yeah, spouse. <laughs> or a child, so. Yes. Thank you. All right, Thank we had a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to 13F, Councillor Balboni.
Oh, I'm thinking we moved that one. <laughs> 13E, Councillor Carey. Try not to take it personal. <laughs> Resolution deauthorizing the remaining appropriations and bond authorization for water pollution control facility project. Whereas a resolution entitled Resolution Appropriating 47 million for the planning, acquisition, and construction of upgrades to the water pollution control facility in the town of South Windsor and authorizing the issuance of 47 million in bonds of the town to meet said appropriations and pending the issuance thereof the making of temporary borrowing for such purpose was adopted by the town council of the town of South Windsor, Connecticut, the town, on September 2nd, 2008, and approved by town electors at a referendum on November 4th, 2008, the WPCA resolution, to provide financing for the planning, acquisition, and construction of upgrades to the water pollution control facility and related costs, the project. Whereas the town received a grant from the State of Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection on March 18, 2010 in the amount of $7,760,004.95 for eligible project costs, the project grant, and issued a $27,516,583.34 project loan obligation dated September 28, 2012 maturing on September 30th, 2032. And whereas the town does not require additional funding for the project and desires to eliminate the remaining appropriations and bond authorization for the project. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the town council of the town of South Windsor that section one, the remaining 11,723,412 appropriations and bond authorization for the project are hereby deauthorized and reduced to zero. Section two, this resolution should take effect immediately upon adoption. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I, I just wanted to point out that, you know, what happened here was when we authorize a bond, we're, we're authorizing what we think the total cost is. In this case, we did receive a grant which lowered the total cost to the town. And so since the project is completed, you don't, you don't want to have hanging around additional authorized monies that you're never going to bond. So to clear the books, that's why we're doing this. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. And the right. No, we... Oh. Councillor Pendleton. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. 13F, Councillor Balboni. All right, resolution setting a time and place for a public hearing to receive citizen input on a small city's grant for renovations and upgrades to Flax Hill. Be it resolved that the South Windsor Town Council hereby sets Monday, May 20th, 2024 at 8 p.m. in the Council Chambers of South Windsor Town Hall, 1540 Sullivan Avenue, South Windsor, Connecticut, as the time and place for a public hearing to receive citizen input on a small city's grant for renovations and upgrades to Flax Hill. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Yes. Councillor Pendleton. Did we, Mr. Maniscalco, already set the public hearing when that gentleman came in, Mr. Daniels Correct. came in? So you already held one public hearing. The federal government requires us to hold two. Got you. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Right, moving on to item 14, passage of ordinance, having none. Item 15, public input for any matter. Public input for any matter over which the council has jurisdiction shall not exceed 30 minutes. When recognized by the mayor, the speaker shall approach the lectern, give their name and address. Speakers shall avoid personal attacks or impugning or alleging an improper motive to any person. The speakers may address the council on any item over which the council has jurisdiction. The speakers shall limit their speaking time to five minutes. Anyone from the public to, to speak on any matter? Good evening, Chief again. Cooney. Um, as I said before in the past, one of my positions as a fire chief is a chance to brag about our members. I just want to take an opportunity to brag about our members one more time and also to thank the town 
in town council and, and, and many agencies, and I'll get into that. Our, this past weekend, we held our rescue weekend where we host a number of training events throughout town. We had over 156 firefighters from all over New England, every state in New England, including New York and Maryland, we're, we're representative. We had over 19 different fire departments, I'm, I'm sorry, 56 different fire departments representative, and we had 19 of our own members go through these classes. We held classes at Station 1, Station 3, um, Veterans Memorial Park, Town Garage, the high school, and even in Glastonbury, and then at the Water Tower at Main and North King Street. All this was organized by about a committee of five or six people. Deputy Chief Tim Papp, Captain Pelletier, Captain Flady, Captain Ortiz, um, Lieutenant Smith, and business support by our own member, Jay Murtha and Jay's Landscaping, um, ESI, the town staff, the school staff, a number of other businesses that we work with for different uh, logistical things, whether it be Munili's, um, Oscars, the Connecticut Brewery, a number of agencies made this all happen. And it was really put together by a small committee that, I don't know how they do it, but to have that many people in town and be able to have our town shine by the works of five or six people is incredible. So I just want to publicly thank them for a huge successful weekend. Uh, it went off, this is our fourth annual event. It's every year it's gotten bigger and better. The attendees want to come back. We have instructors from all over the country as far as ways Toronto, Canada, Ohio, all over the East Coast that come and teach these classes. The training is phenomenal. It is some of the best hands-on training that I've seen offered anywhere. And um, it's all put together by our own members, and, um, but supported by the town staff and, and a number of agencies. And I don't think that should be just a passing weekend that just goes by without mention. So thank you for everything. Thank them for all their efforts. And um, thank you for your support as well. So thank you. Thank you, Keith Cooney. Anyone else like to come forward at this time to speak on any matter? Going once, twice, seeing none, moving on. To item 16, communications from the council. Do we have any communications from the council? Yes. No. Oh, sorry. I apologize. I'm just looking for it. Is it in regards to the Earth Day event on no, April no, 20th? Um, Toby already talked about that. Councilman Lewis already kind of talked about that. It's regards to um, just find it. So it's regards to the, the letter that um, we sent at the last meeting. Um, as you know, on the meeting on April 1st, we um, approved a motion to send a letter to the Democratic Town Committee requesting um, nominations of people to fill Erica Evans' seat. And as of today, we have not received anything, even though it would have had to been received by last Monday to get on the agenda, we haven't received anything. So I, I would like to do two things. Um, one, I think we need to ask the, anyone that's a registered Democrat in the town of South Windsor that is interested in being on town council to please um, reach out to the Democratic Town Committee. Or if you're not sure how to do that, please reach out to you know, any of our counselors. Um, and then the second is, can we send um, a second request to the Democratic Town Committee um, on the letter that we sent out um, two weeks ago asking to please send a nomination. Can I say something? Councillor Pendleton. I didn't mean to turn my light on, but I'm just going to say that I respectfully request that you be patient and wait for the Democratic Town Committee to have their monthly meeting on Thursday evening, the 23rd, and give them a chance to meet, too. Okay. Just like Republicans meet once a month, they meet once a month. So just give them a chance to do their due diligence. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pendleton. Anything further? 
Seeing none, moving on to executive session, which we've already done, so we're not, we don't. Do I hear item 18? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, we are adjourned. <laughs>